electricity is the lifeline of a civilization. Coal-based thermal power plants in India account for more than 65% of the installed capacity and 70% of electricity generation. Besides producing electricity, these thermal power plants also produce huge quantity of coal ash. During 2007-8, coal ash generation in India was about 130 million tons, out of which about 53% was utilized gainfully in various works. Fly ash generated in coal-based thermal power stations is a versatile material and can be gainfully utilized in making cement, concrete, ash bricks, other building products. As an inert material, this is also a useful material for making road embankments, development of low-lying areas, reclamation of mines, etc. This film covers various aspects involved in mine filling, both underground and open cast mines. Traditionally, underground mines are being stowed with sand. Sand is, however, a scarce and costly material essentially required for construction industry. Pond ash can also be safely utilized in stowing of underground mines. The operation of mine stowing with pond ash is similar to that of sand. A chemical is however required to be added as coagulant for faster settlement of pond ash. This chemical has been successfully developed by Central Institute of Mining and Fuel Research, Dhanbad. Pond ash is brought from thermal power station and placed near an underground bunker. It is then mixed with water and the said chemical before discharging through a pipe to the underground mine up to the zone required to be stowed. Bamboo mats and hessian cloth covers are used to arrest ash within the barricade. Ash settles down in the mined out space and decanted water flows out which is recycled back. CMRI has developed an additive by which the pack consolidates at a very fast rate and does not create any amount of pressure at the barricade and the chances of barricade getting burst is minimized. Water is very clear over here and the ash has settled. So when we put it with this additive in underground mines, the ash settles immediately and the water percolates out from the barricade. With this technology, it will be possible to use ash in a, the process which you call place it back from where it has Total यहाँ पर हमारा is sand problem in most of the places for which underground mine mines are suffering. Flies as has come as a substitute of sand, and in future underground mine will be forced to use flyers as a substitute of sand. Then gets stuck up. We are trying successfully the use of flyers in such case to match the difficult condition of hydraulic gradient. More than 1 lakh tons of pond ash was used for such stowing works of underground mines of SCCL using ash from NTPC Ramagundam. CCL has also successfully carried out ash stowing at Swan Colliery. 
Ash can also be gainfully utilized for reclamation of open cast abandoned mine either through wet disposal or dry dumping. Abandoned mine pits of South Balanda mines of Mahanadi coal fields are being successfully reclaimed with ash from NTPC's Talchar thermal power station. Here, ash is being pumped in lean slurry form through pipes up to these mine pits about 10 kilometers away. The satellite picture clearly shows ash filling in abandoned mine pits of South Balanda. Here, the decanted water is pumped back through a floating pump house for recirculation. Abandoned mine pits of Kajora, ECL and Katara of CCL are being reclaimed with ash in dry form brought in dumpers from nearby thermal power station. This ash is suitably dumped and leveled for reclamation from one end. The filled up area is then developed with suitable green cover. Considering limited underground coal mines in operation and very little abandoned coal mines where ash can be gainfully utilized for their reclamation, new segments of large scale ash utilization in mining sector needs to be developed. Large open cast mines generally handle about 1 lakh ton of overburden daily, whereas a 2000 megawatt station generates about 8000 tons of ash every day. Taking a cue for use of ash for road embankment works, wherein ash is suitably encapsulated with soil. Ash from power plants can also be safely encapsulated with large quantity of overburden of an operating mine. The use of fly ash in underground mine stowing operations will be very useful and it has been seen that in Singarin it has been tried very successfully. For the abandoned mines you can fill up with ash, Some in, 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 in a couple of places it is already being done in ECL, in MCL and also uh, it has been tried in Singarini. For open cast mine areas of course there is scope for using it, mix it with the overburden dump and uh, some quantity of uh, as definitely will be consumed in the open cast dumps. We have seen that we have uh, in some of the places we have covered some of the areas with fly ash where there are fire actually in, in the Dhori area in CCL. Nothing has happened as yet and uh, the thing is uh, fire has been quenched with the fly ash. Even if it consumes 10 percent, 20 percent huge quantity of fly ash can be retained on those dumps in uh, active dumps or on the overburden dumps. So, there are good uh, prospects for utilization. Ministry of Environment and Forests has also contemplated use of ash with overburden of operating mines in its draft amendment dated 6 November 2008 on ash utilization. Such large scale ash utilization, along with overburden, can convert large overburden dumps into green cover similar to the ash mound developed at NTPC Dadri, where wide varieties of tree plantations has been developed on ash mound and is well recognized as a tourist spot in the vicinity with lush green area. With the opening up of a new area of use of ash in mining sector, the day is not far when the target set by Ministry of Environment and Forests for ash utilization would be achieved and fly ash will prove itself as a great resource material for mining sector.